So Google's most popular series, Pixel 7a, launched in India for 4399. And as per the competition, it is expensive for the price. But 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 the argument always comes: it's the best camera phone. Or is it? Hmm. Well, we have the newly launched OnePlus 11R, which is a really good smartphone for 40,000, and even Vivo V27 Pro, which is also known for very good cameras. So the question that has to be asked is, which is the best smartphone camera to buy under 40,000 rupees? Now, we recently did a best camera under 30,000, where we recommended the cameras on seven practical scenarios, and you guys love that format, so we'll be sticking to it. Okay, so first up is the skin tone. And right off the bat, you will notice one thing. Here, see this picture? OnePlus 11 up brightens the face. Vivo picture is slightly boosted. Just look at the grass. It looks like greenish, yellowish. Here, I would say the Pixel 7a has taken the best picture. The exposure of my face, foreground and background is proper. And even this picture, see OnePlus's picture looks brighter. Vivo's picture is good, but I love this shot from Pixel 7a. Getting the skin tone right is very crucial and Pixel 7a gets it right most of the time. Like, take this picture of Ravi, OnePlus 11's picture look as if it has selected the face and increased the brightness of it. Vivo's picture is good, but it is more contrasty. His face and t-shirt is slightly boosted. But Pixel's picture looks the best. It looks like just how Ravi looks in real life. So for skin tone, Pixel 7a is my win. However, point to note is, if you remove humans from the frame, like this picture of the grass, then OnePlus's photo is actually good. Or see this photo of the flower. See, OnePlus's photo looks very nice. So it messes up when there is a human subject. And I've seen this usually with OnePlus phone for the past two years. I hope they work on it. Now we have portrait mode. Now portrait mode is a very interesting story. First up, see on Pixel 7a, as soon as I switch to portrait mode, it digitally crops into the picture. Not a big deal because when it works, see all the phones take good portrait photos, like the background blur of all phones is really good. But I'll stress on when it works. Because see in this picture, OnePlus missed doing background blur, like I had selected portrait mode, but it just didn't kick in. And in this picture, Pixel's portrait mode doesn't work. However, in all the shots, Vivo's portrait mode worked without any issue. And there is one special feature with Vivo. See here, even after clicking the photo, I can change the amount of blur and not just that. I can even change the point of focus. Now yes, it does tend to boost the colors a little bit, but that's just a Vivo thing, I guess. Now in portrait mode, I would go with Vivo because it is more reliable than the other two options. And you can know more about these products from the product tag below. So moving on, we have HDR. In simple words, if a phone can show you good details in the most bright as well as in the most dark places, then it has good HDR. And see this picture, all the photos look good. But now if I zoom in, see on OnePlus and Vivo, my cheek area is over bright. There is not much clarity there. But on the Pixel, the exposure, clarity and all of them is just spot on. And even in this photo, we took this in ultra wide angle. OnePlus's photo is just too dark. The grass and my face are not properly exposed. Vivo's exposure is correct, but again, it has added too much color to the picture. Like the grass and my skin tone looks all boosted. Pixel's photo to me is the best. The brightness and color is a proper balance. It also has that sun flare, which makes the photo artistic. So for HDR, Pixel 7a would be my pick. And since we are on the subject of ultra white, let's move on to ultra white. See this picture in ultra white. I would say three phones have three different color tones. Like OnePlus takes slightly cooler photos, Vivo takes warmer and boosted photos, and Pixel takes the most natural looking shot. What you see with your eyes is what you get with the Pixel photo. Now, if I zoom in on this picture, see OnePlus picture looks blurry. Vivo's picture has some extra sharpening going on. Pixel photo looks better than the other two. Or in this picture too, if I zoom in on the grass, Pixel has the most amount of details. So even for ultra wide, I would still choose the Pixel 7. Okay, low light. Now we also clicked quite a few pictures indoor and here all the three phones have decent performance. Like in this picture, I would say all the photos look pretty good. Yes, OnePlus's photo looks a bit punchy. Pixel photo again is more natural and Vivo's photo looks bright and vibrant. Or even this picture in front of our logo, all the phones take good pictures. And flipping the camera to selfies. This is where Vivo takes the cake. Like for years, Vivo has been focusing on the front camera and it shows. Like see this picture, while the OnePlus and Pixel is good, I just love the color tone of Vivo here. And not just that, even if I zoom in on the picture, look at my beard, Vivo has the most amount of detail. OnePlus is a close second and Pixel's photo here is a bit dull. 
However, coming to selfie videos, I would prefer Pixel's video quality. Like we shot this video around 5.30 p.m. and the Pixel's color, exposure, everything is just perfect. And the OnePlus here is too bright, whereas Vivo, it is decent, average. Not too good, not too bad. And speaking of videos. Now, we took a shot of me walking in the park and have a look at the HDR on the Pixel 7a. Like when I make the turn, see the sun is properly exposed on the Pixel 7a. OnePlus's video looks a bit dull and Vivo has boosted the colors and everything. So to answer the question, which is the best smartphone camera under 40,000? Well, I would undoubtedly say it is the Pixel 7a. See, I love the skin tone. I love the color science of Pixel 7a. It is closer to natural. The only issue with Pixel as of now is the portrait mode. It is a hit or miss but I hope they fix it with software updates later. And I would give Vivo V27 Pro the second. It's quite underrated. It does tend to make the photo a bit boosted, but in terms of clarity, sharpness of front camera, it is quite good. OnePlus 11R on the other hand, well, see the phone in itself has some really strong points, like the design, display, performance and all are very good, but camera department is not one of them. So if camera is your priority, no OnePlus 11R. On that note, this is Radeek signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew. Phew!